The dots in this animation show payloads and debris in orbit around the Earth. The objects are generally 10 cm or so larger, but there are many more debris objects too small to be tracked that pose a threat to operating spacecrafts. The animation begins high over Earth's North Pole. The ring of objects in geosynchronous Earth orbit is clearly visible, and Earth is hidden by a swarm of dots. An arc of geo objects is visible in the background. There are more than a million bits of debris larger than 1 cm moving around Earth at speeds of 15 km per second. That's 10 times the speed of a bullet. There are more than 28,000 objects larger than 10 cm, and at this size, they could shatter a spacecraft. If space debris is not cleared, this would eventually trigger the Kessler Syndrome, a catastrophic chain reaction of collisions and destruction, making low Earth orbit unusable for generations. Understanding the gravity of the situation, our team Cluster 6 has decided to tackle this problem. So our solution consists of a LiDAR module that comes within a casing and then is mounted upon a satellite. Now this satellite when it goes to space, the LiDAR module collects data in real time and sends it back to the inbuilt communication systems within the satellite. Now once the data is retrieved from the module, it goes to the MATLAB code which then creates a 3D plot. Now this 3D plot and the data used to create the plot goes to our Jupyter Notebook section which we use in our prototype to analyze the data and calculate certain variables like intensity, size of the object, um, you know, the relative closeness of, you know, if a lot of objects are close to it, uh, the danger levels, etc. Now this data once calculated, we then goes to the graphical user interface which displays the plot the data and our inferences alongside. So this helps scientists position their satellite and send their satellites on such trajectories as to their to reduce the risk of their satellite being harmed by space debris. This also will help us map the entire entirety of all the satellites and space debris, which will also help us better our approach to in solving space debris in the near future. This ingenious and game-changing idea was based on a simple tactic. Just how two goalkeepers of opposite teams in a football match can overlook and find out where each and every player is on the field. In the same way, we intend to launch four satellites mounted with a LiDAR module orbiting the Earth in the highest orbit permissible, which is 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Just like radar and sonar, LiDAR uses the time of flight principle, that is, it can tell you how far away an object is by measuring how much time light takes to move back and forth after bouncing off target. With this idea, we will be able to get real-time positions of any object that is present between the atmosphere and the geostationary orbit. In short, we will have GPS for space. Okay, so this is our flow of operations. So we have our LiDAR module which is then connected to our PC using a jumper wire and a connector and we use an application called Serial Pi to get the data from the LiDAR once that is retrieved, we send it to Firebase which stores real-time data the real-time data is then transmitted to MATLAB which waits until a particular you know, set of values are recorded it then generates a 3D plot and supporting graphs and that data is then converted into a CSV file and sent to Python where we use Jupyter Notebooks to analyze and find various different variables like intensity, closeness and we also apply want to apply machine learning which will help train our model to identify between a close object that is, uh, that is small and a large object that is far, you know, far away. So and then the, finally the results are compiled and uh, sent to our graphical user interface and presented in a neat manner so that an analyst can grasp a lot of data and a lot of information at first glance. Hey, I'm here to explain the phase where MATLAB plays its role. A LiDAR module records data in a .laz or a .las format which contains information about the coordinates and GPS timestamps in a point cloud format. This data is first loaded into a map using a simple time varying point cloud map. We then record the entire data and visualize it as a single map by extracting the data points from point cloud. We will then take two point clouds corresponding to the nearby LiDAR scans. We then detect and remove the plane and ego vehicle displayed in separate maps. 
We then align and combine successive LiDAR scans using feature-based registration by estimating rigid transformations followed by merging and aligning point clouds. This process is looped over the entire sequence of recorded data. The result is a map of the environment transversed by the vehicle. The Space Navigation System we propose is a versatile version of the LiDAR technology where it can be integrated with various satellites that shall launch year after. This shall provide us various data collecting points through which we can track and maintain the orbits of various older satellites to space junk. This technology has a wide application from being able to detect the upper boundary of the atmosphere to be able to predict the path of various satellites and space junk that's already there through the grid system. This can also be integrated into a LiDAR-based internet technology for the space exploration that shall take place hereafter. Right, so after getting the data from MATLAB, we'll convert it into CSV format. We'll be using machine learning to dig more deeper into our data and see what kind of information can be inferred from it. We'll first begin with importing the file in the Jupyter Notebook using Pandas library. After applying various different kind of formulas, we find out intensity and altitude, and we accordingly display those. We can use various different kind of algorithms to display specific column values or specific row values, even the entire column or the, the entire row. We can also change the column index, like setting of index or like changing the data frame as per the requirement of the analyst to better have to have a better understanding of the data. The most important thing is of finding the maximum and minimum value of a row and column and displaying all the column value pertaining to that specific value and that we can also do using this is the, this is the final data set. More different kind of operations can also be performed as per the kind of analysis we need to carry out to get the more crucial information from the data. This is how basically machine learning can be used and it can help in enhancing our interpretation of the raw data. Point cloud data was collected from the LiDAR sensor attached to the Ego vehicle and was made into a map using MATLAB feature-based map building. We use the MATLAB app designer to create a GUI where we can see the map. We incorporated callback functions in the code to enable the different controls. Then we ran the final code, which popped out into another window, giving us the interactive app. We can click on the generate graph button to see the final graph. So this is our progress report. Uh, we've given our uh, prototype model for 3D printing. Um, in the meanwhile, we've constructed a basic cardboard model. It looks like this. The LiDAR fits in this little cavity. Uh, we have two ports to connect it to our PC and the battery is fitted within this cavernous space. And uh, once we get our LiDAR module, we'll be testing it um, in my um, house to see whether you know it can map out domestic surroundings. Um, our ML is still in progress. We want to make sure that we implement more machine learning so that the model is more trained and also build, uh, we're focused on building a graphical user interface from scratch so that you know the data looks neater and you know an analyst is able to understand everything very quickly and doesn't have to put too much effort from his end. Uh, I think it's only a brief amount of time for the world guests to see agile technology.